before the courage and charisma of Muhammad Ali and the dominance of Mike Tyson and the power of Deontay Wilder, there was the godfather of it all, Jack Johnson. Jack Johnson was truly ahead of his times. He was the first black heavyweight champion in history, reigning from 1908 to 1915, in a time where being black and being a boxer and being a lot of other things was not accepted. But Jack didn't care. He wore it proudly and boasted. Jack was truly a pioneer. He sported a mouth full of gold teeth, dated white women, dated Hispanic women, dated anybody he wanted to and did it, did it in public and was proud of it. Jack Johnson was the complete fighter of the era. He had one of the best defenses we've ever seen. He hit harder almost than any fighter in history, pound for pound, era for era. And his boxing skills were unmatched. He was very, very sharp and smart at holding his fighters. And his inside fighting game was 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 unbelievable. People think Terrence Bud Crawford, after hearing that he was down on the cards against Sean Porter and then instantly coming out and ending the fight, people think that was gangster. The most gangster thing to ever happen in the ring was when Jack Johnson fought Stanley Ketchell. Stanley Ketchell was the middleweight champion of the world who wanted to go up and challenge Jack. Because of the size difference, Jack was not going hard on Stanley and was giving the fans a show. And throughout the fight, you see here that he was toying with Stanley. He even held Stanley up a couple times after hitting him too hard by mistake. But in the 12th round, Stanley Ketchell, looking to seize the opportunity of a lifetime to become the middleweight and the heavyweight champion at the, at the same exact time, throws a hard overhand right that manages to catch Jack in the back of the head as Jack was ducking away from the shot and drops him. And the most gangster thing ever in the squared circle ensues after this. Jack instantly gets up from this knockdown. He hits him so hard that he lodges two of Stanley's teeth in his own glove. And here you could see Jack, after doing that, swiping the teeth off the glove and getting ready to commence the severe butt whooping. But at that point, Stanley Ketchell was out cold and the fight was over. Johnson lost a lot of the prime years of his boxing career, not being able to fight, being in legal trouble and fighting overseas because the US government hated the fact that he was a black man dominating all the white fighters and talking crap about it in, in a time in the early 1900s where it was a total white society. And he would date all white women and have no problem being in public with them. So they got him on a technicality called the Man Act where they arrested him for quote unquote transporting women over state lines, which was really meant for prostitution, for, for pimps bringing over prostitutes, but they hit Jack with that on a technicality. So he spent many of the years not being able to fight and fighting in Cuba and all these other things and losing a lot of the prime years of his career, very similar to what happened with Muhammad Ali when he didn't want to fight in the military. Jack reigned for seven years as heavyweight champion of the world until he ended up in 1915 fighting Jess Willard and getting knocked out in the 26th round. Now, Jack later claimed that he threw the fight, which is highly supported here, showing when Jack goes down, him covering his eyes from the sun, when him saying, look, if I was really knocked out and, and didn't have my wits about me, I wouldn't be able to lift up and cover my, sun, my eyes from the sun. He's like, I fell on purpose and I didn't, the sun was getting in my eyes. So a lot of people believe that, but it's still up for debate if he really did throw the fight. He was older at this point. Now, sadly, Jack Johnson ended up dying uh, in his 60s uh, after being pulled over by a cop and harassed for being black. He was so upset, he was speeding his car and he ended up dying in a car crash. Uh, racism is, is technically what ended up killing Jack Johnson in the very end. Very sad ending to a great champion. But recently Jack Johnson was actually pardoned from that Man Act accusation and all his legal troubles by President Donald Trump showing his appreciation of the great champion and how far ahead he was for his time. Jack Johnson was extremely smart in the ring and it showed and he was smart outside the ring in the way he promoted himself and he barely had a third grade education. But here you see him speaking, he sounds like a college professor. Ladies and gentlemen, I have been requested by many to tell just how I have knocked so many of my opponents out. That day has passed and gone, so far as I'm concerned. Today, I have a new way in knocking them out, and I will show you. 
which makes sense because he was so smart inside the ring and the way he promoted himself outside the ring. So the question is, where do you guys rate Jack Johnson as an all-time great heavyweight? Now remember, there's two criterias. If your criteria is time warping and having the two fighters get in a time machine and fighting each other as is, that to me doesn't count. And clearly a lot of the bigger, more advanced fighters of today would be able to beat the guys of yesterday. But if you take era for era and the accomplishments each fighter had in their specific eras and how easily they dominated, where do you put Jack Johnson in the all-time great heavyweight champion list? Tell me in the comments.